All right, we are on day 35. So we're approaching Holy Week here. Uh, whether you're binging this or whether you're doing it uh, as we go along, that's that's where we're going to be going at this point. So we're in John 12, 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches. They went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that, that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Our Devo today is from Tamrisker. Uh, John devotes about half of his gospel to just one week of time in the life of Jesus. The week starts with Palm Sunday and ends with Easter each day full of sweeping drama and twists and turns and wild emotions. Let's look at Palm Sunday. Did you know that the name Tamara means palm tree? Each gospel writer tells the story a little different. John sketches the bare bones of the story, but seems to want us to see the less visible nuances involved. He gives the backstory of the political and religious intrigue, and it's not pretty. It's pretty ugly. Today's church celebration of Palm Sunday often includes a reenacted focus on the sweet, joyful child part, waving of the palm branches and shouting of joy and hosanna. I love those celebratory parades. Yes, this joy is there in the Gospel of John. But the backstory, the underbelly, is one of homicidal intent. Kill Jesus and kill Lazarus. Holy Week is full of life and death tension. It starts with Palm Sunday and it never lets up. Jesus was often in the middle of tension and turmoil. And he often turned things upside down. Remarkable. This is where we find him again and again being a peacemaker. Being like Jesus involves being a peacemaker. Even when faced with those who don't like you or throw hate at you, the challenge was great for Jesus and is a great challenge for us too. If we are honest, sometimes the turmoil is in our own family. Sometimes it is in our place of work, church, or nation. Sometimes the way forward is unclear. Maybe it was for Jesus too. Jesus asked for a humble donkey to ride, not a war horse. Maybe that's a good place for us to start too. As you enter Holy Week this year, take time to contemplate how you can be like Jesus and bring peace. This is, uh, for most Christians, the best part of the year. The celebration between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. So I'm just going to encourage you this. If you've never gone to any celebration between those two days, you never gone to anything that a church is doing on Wednesday night, on Thursday night, on Friday night, or on Saturday. And there's churches that will do those celebrations on different days. If you've never gone through one of those things where we're going to get into in the next few days, in the lows of the in-between, 
what you end up doing is Jesus entering to the triumphal praises and you show back up the following Sunday and we're praising Jesus is risen. You miss all the tension. You miss all the turmoil. You miss all the twists and turns of the threats, of the violence, of the weight of the world on the Savior's shoulders. So if you've never done it, never done a Wednesday service, a Monday, Thursday service, a Good Friday service, go and do it this year, my friends. Go experience what was between those two times when Jesus was praised as king and when he showed himself to be the true king. All of the depth of the despair, all of the things that came against him. You're missing it if you've never done it. So go experience it for the first time if you've never done it before. And if you've done it before, this is part of why we go through Lent, is to know the weight of what Jesus experienced on our behalf.